In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen from paper 3-2 from 2024 of the Cambridge A-Level exam. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, check out the description below for a link to a playlist. And if you're looking for a different paper entirely, have a look around on my channel. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing. But remember, we're not in a classroom, we're on YouTube. So take advantage of that. Use the pause, uh, rewind and fast forward uh, buttons. Um, if you find this video or any of my videos useful, I would greatly appreciate liking, subscribing or even sharing. In question four, they give us a, an equation to a curve. Uh, it looks like this, very complicated um, looking. And they ask us to find the gradient of this curve at a point where y equals one. Okay, so we hear gradient, we're hopefully thinking differentiation. But how do you differentiate this? Usually we have y equals, we differentiate both sides. We don't even think of differentiating both sides. We just think y equals, then get the derivative. Um, but we can't do that here, it's, it's just too complicated. We'd, we'd get a y out, but still leave one in. It's just way too difficult. So why don't we use um, implicit differentiation? So what that means is, it means differentiating both sides, taking all of the left and differentiating it. And I'm gonna write that like this, d dx. That's what I'm gonna use as differentiate. When I differentiate the left, it works like multiply. I differentiate this and I differentiate this. So we get d dx of y e uh, to the power two x plus the derivative of y squared, y, y squared e to the power of x. And on the right side, I still have to differentiate that, uh, d dx of a six. So that's what implicit differentiation means to us. Now we're just left with a, a bunch of questions that we have to differentiate. Uh, di like this one's easy, it's just zero. Uh, but this one, for example, we're differentiating two things. And that means we're using the product rule. Skipping ahead then, we're also differentiating something that's a little complicated. We're gonna use the chain rule for that. So it's a, it's a long differentiation question, really. Let's start off here. The derivative of this is the product rule. The product rule, at least how I remember it, um, tells me to differentiate the first part of it, the, the two parts here. Differentiate the first part, so that's just dy dx. So that might be, hopefully that doesn't confuse you, but the derivative of y is the derivative of y. That's all I've wrote there. I just basically haven't done it. Um, so we differentiate the first part and we leave the next one alone. So e to the two x. Then we add on to that the derivative of the second one and we leave the first one alone. So I'll just put y on its own first. So how do we differentiate e to the two x? Very common one to differentiate. It, it, we're sort of using the chain rule. e to the power of something becomes e to the power of the same thing. It doesn't change. E, e's are really easy to differentiate. That's why they're invented in fact. Um, anyway, the derivative of e to the 2x is still e to the 2x, except we cheated a little. It, it wasn't e to the x, it was e to the 2x. So we have to fix that cheat with the chain rule. Chain rule means we'll end up multiplying by the derivative of what we substitute. So the derivative of uh, 2x is 2. So we'll end up multiplying by 2. I'll leave it there. Next, we differentiate this one. Again, this is a product rule. There's two terms here although this one's gonna be a little more difficult. Again, we're gonna use the chain rule. Um, so the product rule, differentiate the first one. So how do we differentiate y squared? Well, differentiating something squared is easy. So if this was say x squared, it would just become two x, or in this case, two y. So I'm gonna differentiate y as if I was differentiating with respect to y, two y. That's cheating, that's using the chain rule. Um, what did I cheat? I replaced um, y with an x, or I substituted it. So we need to fix that by multiplying by the derivative of the thing we replaced. In this case, um, it's derivative of y itself, which is, let's uh, put it here, dy dx. Now it's not so bad we're getting these dy dx's, remember, because we're looking for the gradient, dy dx. So it's pretty good. Um, so Okay, we've differentiated the first term here, and we leave the next one alone, that's e to the x. They we're still in the product rule of these two. Uh, then we leave the first one alone, that's y squared. And we differentiate the second one. The derivative of ex is still ex. All that equals the derivative of six. 
six doesn't move so the derivative of something that doesn't move that's stable that's constant is zero okay let's clean all this up um, and the, the main thing we want to focus on is on the dy dx because remember that's what we're looking for so let's take dy dx out of the terms it's in dy dx is in a e to the 2x and uh, plus 2y e to the x so that's I've taken a dy dx out of those two terms and then I'll put everything else over the equals so we'll have equals and this guy will end up coming over that'll be minus y or 2y e to the 2x minus y squared e to the x and then let's continue up here then I get, again I want dy dx that's what the question asks for so let's uh, divide everything by this here so we'll end up with dy dx is equal to this here minus 2y e to the 2x minus y squared ex all divided by e to the 2x plus 2y e to the x now at this point we could uh, we could uh, take a few things out of this uh, for example y goes into the top two um, oh e to the x goes into everything there's an e to the x here e to the x here remember we can write e to the 2x as e to the x squared that's the same thing so there's an e to the x here an e to the x here we can cancel across honestly i wouldn't bother doing too much like that because we're really just going to substitute in some numbers so to get this at the point where y equals 1 we just have to substitute y equals 1 and substitute in x now that's where you might know it's a problem we could have done this all the way to start i'll squeeze it in on the other side of the board there and um, they never give us x they usually would in a question like this um, or they might ask us to find it ourselves at this point all we need to do is fill in x and y so i, I really want to know what x is uh, we know what y is and we have an equation right here so it should be quite easy to find x uh, if I if I fill y as 1, I'll get e to the 2x plus, again, y squared is 1, e to the x is equal 6. That's a quadratic equation. e to the x squared plus e to the x minus 6 equals 0. We can go ahead and solve that. That's a e to the x. Um, I'm not filling it, I'm not giving much room here, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, 2 times 3 would work for everything here. Uh, let's say a 2 here and a 3 here. We would like the number to be, the bigger number to be positive. So that's a 3 times 1, so that's to be plus here, minus here. That gets e to the x is equal to 2, or e to the x is equal to minus 3. And uh, this is a problem. Uh, hopefully you know that. Um, you can try solve these. Well, let's solve the top one. Natural log of both sides. We'll get x is equal to two. Um, sorry, nat natural log of two. And natural log of both of these sides will be a problem because you can't get the natural log of minus numbers. And um, also, just a, an e function looks like this. E is never minus. So, so this one's wrong. We leave that one. But x is equal to natural log. Two. that's what we find out from that and so back to the real question all we have to do is fill in these two numbers now so you just go through this fill it in it's not as scary as it looks to save us a little bit of trouble I will point out that 2x is equal to 2 natural log 2 which is equal to natural log 2 squared which is equal to natural log 4 so I'm going to use that fact a few times because e to the natural log, just destroy it. Okay, so this is minus two, y is a one, e to the power of, well, I'll write one of them in, e to the power of two x is e to the power of natural log four, These, that's just four, remember, e and the natural log destroy each other, minus, this is one, um, e to the power of x is e, I'll write this one in as well, e to the power of natural log two, they'll destroy it, that's just two. I won't bother doing that in the bottom row. Um, oh, I've, I've already broke this out, haven't I? Uh, e to the power of uh, e to the power of natural log two. That's just two. Two squared. That's just four. Whichever way, same as up here, got a four. Uh, plus two times y is is two. E to the x is 
e to the natural log 2, that's just 2. So 2 times 2, that's 4. Um, so remember, that top row was actually minus 2 times 4, minus 8, um, minus a 2, over 8 plus 8, that's a, a 4 plus 4 is 8. That's a minus 10 over 8. Um, and I guess that is minus 5 over 4. That's your answer. Okay, there's lots of points in that question where it's okay to have questions. Uh, let me know, ask me, put them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. Um, I'm sure I wasn't clear at some points or others. It's, it's a long, nasty question. So feel free to ask some questions. Um, until next time, have a good day.